I've heard it all before. You're a Zoom medical student. All knowledge and no clinical experience. You know the theory, but lack the practice. You're not a real medical student, a true physician. And look, I get it, because the truth is, most of the time, I believe it. I spend most of my time learning how to diagnose and treat diseases that I've never encountered in a real patient. How could I possibly become like the physicians that trained before me, forming differential diagnoses, performing physical exams, saving lives in clinics, hospitals, and urgent care centers? In just the US alone, Outpatient visits account for nearly 900 million visits per year. And that doesn't even include inpatient care. Studies suggest that 85% of diagnoses are made with just the patient history and physical exam. So how are medical trainees taking up these skills today compared to their predecessors? Well, let's just say that this is the lost art of medicine. If you're new to the channel, my name is Danny Kalani. I'm a first year medical student in Canada. In my early medical training, I've been exposed to a lot of the facts of medicine through virtual lecturing. I've also had a chance to improve the way that I communicate with patients and learn how to perform different aspects of a physical exam. The lost art of medicine refers to a trend in modern medical practice that de-emphasizes communication and physical exam skills. Although shows like House MD may lead us to think that an exceptional physician is one who can diagnose a patient without having ever met them, that couldn't be further from the truth. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of a patient history and physical exam in making a diagnosis. To reiterate, nearly 9 out of 10 patients are diagnosed before tests and imaging are ordered. In practice, this looks like a patient telling their story to a physician. The physician interprets the patient's story to develop a list of possible diagnoses, each with a corresponding probability. These probabilities shift and diagnoses can be added or removed from the list as the physician asks follow-up questions and performs a physical exam. Based on this initial information gathering process, the physician can choose which tests to order. In a perfect situation, the physician is able to unify all the distinct data points through a single diagnosis. Clearly, the time spent with the patient is essential for forming a diagnosis. If the time spent talking to and examining the patient is so vital, why are we losing these aspects of medicine? The answer is two-part, involving both modern medical systems as well as medical education. Medical systems today are under increasing pressure to see more patients with less time. In fact, in numerous healthcare systems, including the one in Canada, most physicians are compensated based on the number of patients that they see. And this creates an incentive for spending less time with each patient. Visits with family physicians in Canada in fact, last an average of 15 minutes. With such limited time to see each patient, taking a thorough history and performing a physical exam are often the first things to be cut short. A study has shown that physicians will give their patients an average of 11 seconds to explain the reason for their visit before interrupting them. That's about enough time to say a sentence and a half. At the same time, technology has changed the playing field. To make it so that we can replace aspects of patient interaction with lab tests and imaging that provide similar data. For example, instead of taking the time to listen to a patient's story about their shortness of breath, a physician that's crunched for time might just order an array of tests. Every test has its own risks and patients want to feel heard. Clearly, patients don't appreciate this and physicians don't either. Many medical students will actually try to avoid this scenario by going into a specialty where they're able to spend more time with patients, like psychiatry. However, the blame for reduced emphasis on history taking and physical exams doesn't lie solely on medical systems. Medical education is faced with growing amounts of knowledge 
with the same amount of time. This puts increased pressure on curriculum makers to prioritize the things that they believe matters most to patient care. Let me explain to you the importance of a physical exam by telling you the story of a medical student which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's titled, The Demise of the Physical Exam. A medical student named Sandeep was on his internal medicine rotation. He encountered a patient that was most likely having a heart attack and was tasked with taking the patient's blood pressure, which is a commonly taught physical exam skill. He goes on to take the patient's blood pressure on one arm and calls it out as 100 over 60. Then as other members of the team arrive to work on other aspects of this patient's care, Sandeep checks the patient's blood pressure using the patient's other arm and doesn't hear anything. He thought it might just be all the noise on the unit and partially his inexperience. The difference in blood pressure between arms is a concern because it can be an indicator for a serious condition called an aortic dissection. This is what this patient had. And because it wasn't caught early enough, it ultimately resulted in the patient's death. This is why our doctors need to be fluent in making diagnoses based on a physical exam. It's also why physical exam skills could always use more emphasis in our curriculum. In this publication, Sandeep also talks about how medical education prioritizes teaching students about normal physical exam findings. When I go into the medical school to practice physical exam skills, I'm working with standardized patients. These are patient actors that have been selected by the medical school because they have normal findings. This leaves medical trainees less certain of what an abnormal finding will look like when they actually encounter one. You might think that this gets better when medical trainees go off to clerkship and residency and start to see patients that are actually sick. But other issues come along with that too. As treatments have improved, patients are spending less time in the hospital. This leaves less time for a larger group of medical trainees to see any single patient. At the same time, patients are no longer present during rounds for the sake of respecting a patient's privacy. But this impacts learning opportunities by separating the patient's experiences and physical findings from the educational discussions that used to happen at the bedside. On top of all this, residents face the pressure of seeing so many patients per day that it would be impossible to conduct a physical exam on each one of them. Medical training is much like an apprenticeship training system. Learners are educated by the very doctors that trained before them. The fear of medical educators around the world is that if these skills are lost in the current generation of physicians, then who will pass them down to the next generation? This is the lost art of medicine.